Hello my lovelies, welcome back to my channel and into my vanity room because today we are going to do something really different that I haven't done in a long long time so many of my friends and followers have been asking me how do I achieve that flawless skin so today we are going to do JC's foundation tutorial I must say that foundation to me it's very very important because firstly it creates this barrier between your skin and the pollution in the environment that you are in so if you do wear foundation every day it will do you more good than harm I know um, when I was younger my mom always tells me oh don't put foundation all the time you're clogging up your skin it's not good for your skin you should not wear makeup because you want to let your skin breathe but guys the environment is so so polluted and to be honest I feel that me wearing foundation and me not wearing foundation there is a big difference in my skin condition after that the thing is my skin does get clogged more than if I wear foundation the key is to actually cleanse it really thoroughly and your cleansing step at the end of the day it's going to determine whether your skin is going to clog up or not in fact there are so many foundations on the market these days that have got skincare benefits built into it so you actually benefit from it as you wear it so me i am an avid fan of foundation can't live without it so guys i hope you enjoy this one okay welcome to my foundation little corner these are my favorite ones and these are the items that i will be using in this video guys i have had my skin prepped with my skincare already i don't have any foundation or powder on right now Let's see on this white tissue i've also had my skin prepped with my favorite foundation base this is from guerlain it's the 24 karat gold pari I love this and I have used I think like six bottles of it it's good for hydrating my skin and I also feel that my makeup holds on a lot better when I put this on so another tip of letting my makeup stay for like the whole day without moving is I like to dust a little bit of loose powder before I put on my foundation. I have mine in this French apocary glass container because it's just easier for me to pick up the powder. This is the compact form, but I like to use the loose powder form when I'm at home. This is great for bringing it out for your touch-ups. They call it the light reflecting setting powder. So I've got the loose one here in this glass container. What I do is to take a little bit of it. So what you want to do is to just set your face and it actually blurs out your pores when you apply a layer of loose powder um, before you do your foundation. So I'm just going to do it very sparingly like this. Just lightly tap it on different places. Just want to make sure that I'm not using too much of it. I like to put it on my nose area because that is the part where I see the most pores. Okay guys, I'm looking this way because I've got another mirror there. Just let me make sure that I got it evenly. Okay, so I like to use a spatula like this to spread my foundation. It will spread it really, really thin thinly like paper thin um, I started doing this and I feel that it really 
helps my foundation look a lot more dewy and it's flawless, it's even. I got this um, spatula from Picasso. So I've got two different sets of my top two favourite foundations. My top two favourites for foundation is the Galan Pari Gold Skin in the Radiant Finish and also Dior Forever Skin Glow. They have the matte version as well but personally I love to have some glow on my face. It just looks more natural that way but if I'm going for a night out and I just want my makeup to look absolutely like super super flawless then I will opt for the matte versions of these which I also have. Um, today I'm going to go with the Guerlain one and because I'm also going to go with the Dior Forever Skin Corrector. I have this one in four different colors from the lightest to the darkest because I also use it to highlight certain parts of my face and to contour certain parts of my face as well. And you will notice in this video that I am going to be using two different color of foundation because I also like to use a darker color around the edges of my face like my jawline so that it's like a natural contour without contouring it too much but um, I'm contouring it with my foundation as well and I think that looks a lot more natural for me because I'm not used to like very heavy contours on my face unless I'm doing a photo shoot and um, the lighting is going to be really strong and that is when I might use like a contour palette or um, a contour stick. Oops, hang on, let's just get this. Okay now let's get started. I am going to start doing my foundation step. Um, I usually like to do my concealer after I have my foundation on so I'll just avoid the places which I am going to be using concealer on so that it won't like build up too thick. I'm using the Perigo Skin in the color 1N first in the center of my face. So just squeeze out a little bit like that. I prefer to squeeze out uh, little by little instead of like one whole block because I don't want it to kind of like dry up. So what I do is I squeeze a dollop of foundation like that and then I go over it with this metal spatula thinly so that the sides have got like foundation on it like something like that. Should look like that thinly and then I'm going to just Spread it thinly like that. Notice that it goes really thinly on your face and then you just like keep spreading it until you get the desired um, thinness. I mean, don't go too thick on this step because you can always add on if you feel like certain parts you don't have enough foundation. So yeah, I'm just going to do the center of my face like that. Okay, you can see that there's still foundation here but let's leave that. And I like to um, use a foundation brush. I never never put on my foundation with my fingers. In, in fact, I always use brushes for any uh, makeup step, I just don't use my fingers at all. This is my favorite one of the moment. It's from Hourglass and it's kind of like tapered. Because it's tapered to the shape of your face, I feel that it does a better job. And I like to dab my foundation instead of like pulling it. Because it's already been spread so thin, so I think um, I shouldn't be like dragging it just like to just tap it into my skin and see that the finish is really luminous okay I'm done with this side so I'm going to go on the other side so take the other side of the spatula and just go over like and just go over like that really thinly I'm looking at my other mirror and just dab. 
with a foundation brush. I spend the most time doing my foundation in my whole makeup regime. At least a good 15 minutes doing my foundation on a regular day. So if it's going to be like a special event, maybe like half an hour, I like to take my time to make sure that I've got everything flawless because I always believe that if you have a good base done and that is like 50% of the battle won already. So take your time to let the foundation be tapped in. For like my chin area, I'm going to take a little bit more and I just go like that. And repeat the tapping. But of course, for like um, my nose area and my upper lip area, I'm not going to be using the spatula. But for my forehead, I am going to do that. So this is the last part that I will be using this um, spatula to lay on the foundation. And then tap it in. You don't have to take the foundation all the way up to your hairline. Sometimes I just leave like the edges of my face without any foundation. I mean, if it's not like um, it's a casual day and I just want to look a lot more natural, so I will not take the foundation all the way up. It gives you this natural contour line that makes your face look a lot smaller as well. But if you want to be precise and um, flawless, what I do is I will use a darker color on the sides of my face, which I'm going to show you in a minute. All right, okay. Now I'm going to take a bit more foundation. And I will use another smaller contour foundation brush to dab it like on my nose area. So to avoid all the creases around the sides of your nose, do not put too much foundation on these areas. Sometimes I try not to powder these areas as well, but um, I will show you how to do it like really gently and really sparingly. Because when you do too much at the sides of your nose, it's just going to look cakey. Shift just to make sure that I get the foundation all into these crevices. Tap a little bit more for this side. Okay, I know that's enough. Now I'm going to go to my upper lip area. Just a small amount of foundation and just like tap it in. I think I have achieved the, a flawless finish for the center of my face now. I'm going to pick up a darker color of the same foundation. This one is number two. So I use number one for like the center of my face and now I'm going for number two. And a small pump of the number two. And what I do is instead of like scraping the foundation here, I just use the smaller brush to pick out a small amount of it. And I just like dab on the jawline because I put my foundation like everywhere in the center of my face, but I did not go on the jawline. So I'm going to do that very, very lightly. And whichever parts that you want to contour, like to give the illusion of a smaller face, because when the light hits, it usually hits the lightest part of your face. And uh, when people look at you, all they see is like this small little, um, part that where the light will hit and the sides will just be in the background 
which is why I am using a uh, one shade darker and then I'll use the larger foundation brush and I am just going to stab it in so you can see that it will give you like this natural contour right I think we are about done so you can also use a, the darker color on your hairline to give like the illusion of a smaller forehead so I'm gonna do that here if you want the effect to be more obvious um, or like a bigger contrast you can always go like two shades up your usual foundation color for these contours I'm not a strong contour lover so I am just using one shade up just for like the a very uh, subtle effect okay I think we're about done the foundation looks good um, I see very few places that I need to have concealer but of course under my eyes I do need some concealer so um, so what I do is I like to highlight the center of my nose with the lightest color of the duo forever skin corrector I'm using uh, zero N which is like almost blanc almost white just take a little bit out and put it on like my palette just like a small dab of it here feels like a, I'm an artist and I like to take a beauty blender pick up a little bit of this skin corrector and just dab it down the center okay I'm going to dab it real carefully because I don't want it to be like not straight and on the tip of my nose to give like this a sharper nose dab 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 the key to achieving that flawless like thin natural is almost like you have no foundation on kind of look is to make sure that you spend enough time just pushing the product into your skin so that it will not seem like it's floating above your skin which is a look that I absolutely hate I hate to see like makeup that is not adhering to the skin I'm going to take the color of my skin uh, to conceal my under eye circles I'm going to go with 1.5 because sometimes I just really don't like my under eye to be reflecting too much light so I try not to use a very very light color I try to go like a half shade up from my foundation color taking a little bit and put it onto this palette spread it thinly using a beauty blender just make sure that it's so thin because I don't like the cakey look of the concealer so I like to really spread it out although this Dior Skin Corrector one is very hydrating I like it a lot I've been using this for a long long time as well just use it sparingly on areas that you need like for me it is just like this little dark line here which I'm sure none of you can see but only I can see it but guys you know we are always most critical of ourselves try not to put too much product uh, on the beauty blender um, the first time if you need to you can always take more but if you put too much of it I'm afraid it will be really hard you might have to clean off the part and redo it again so less is always more okay now I'm going to do the other side notice that I'm always pressing it pressing it until there's almost nothing to achieve the thinnest thinnest finish ever gotta do that and if I feel like there's and if I feel like there's not enough of it I'll just take more just go over right see what I mean and places where you feel like you need some concealer as well like a 
I've got a little spot here so I will take a bit of that same concealer and just thinly dab on instead of you know using your fingertips and it gets quite thick I like to use the beauty blender because I think it gives me the best finish I think there's not much to conceal and I like to go over it to make sure that it is further spread out I suddenly saw another spot here okay the foundation is done I'm quite happy with it are you guys happy with it so it gives me that natural glow and if you want it to be even more natural, wait maybe like 10 minutes before you set your foundation but usually I like to do the rest of my makeup when I am waiting for the foundation to sit in like for example maybe like to my lashes, these are extensions by the way um, but I usually put on a coat of clear mascara to separate them and make sure that they stay in place the whole day so I'll do that or I will do my eyeliner while waiting for my foundation to set in but as you can see I have already had my eyeliner drawn prior to doing this foundation video I'm just going to take a break have a Kit Kat maybe okay guys it is um, 10 minutes later I've let my foundation sit into my face make sure you do a final check i've done my final check to make sure that there aren't any areas that i want to you know yeah maybe here just to make sure everything is even because once you set your loose powder your fate is sealed you technically will not be able to correct your makeup um sometimes you can I have ways of doing that but I prefer not to so yeah I always make sure that it is you know perfect it's flawless already you can see that it's glowy I still can let my natural skin glow so the trick is to not put too much loose powder on your face if you want to have that natural glow just put it on areas that you feel that you want to mattify just one last check one last check to make sure that everything is perfect okay it's perfect now okay now to seal my fate I'm using the same one as I used earlier on it is the NARS light reflecting powder I love this powder because it is so fine and it has got light reflecting properties it's really light there's no color it's translucent it's always nice to um, use a natural loose powder so I'm taking a very very tiny brush you can see that I'm using all the hourglass brushes simply because I feel that they are the best ones for me by the way not sponsored nothing sponsored in this video these are just like my favorite products that I use on a daily basis and I swear by them and I trust that they do a good job and that is why I'm sharing with you guys so take a little bit always tap the excess off so the places that I would put loose powder on under my eyes that's why I need this very small brush just lightly tap it these are the areas that I would put loose powder on maybe you don't want to put loose powder on your whole face because it definitely eliminates the glow that you have in Singapore it's really humid so even if I put loose powder on like the rest of my face I'm going to be glowy like in an hour down the center of my nose area but very very little just very little and even less like at the sides of my nose where 
it always have the tendency to crease and cake up if you are too heavy handed and of course on top of my lip because when it's hot i tend to perspire i try not to put it on like these two areas because these two areas like your small lines tend to catch the powder and if you don't want to end up with a line like it just looks horrible and after that you won't be able to re remove it so i try not to powder that area which is why i said that um i will always use a small brush like this this is easier for me to just tap the loose powder on places that I feel that I need. Not many actually. So I try not to put too much on my cheek area. But if I just want to give a light dusting of loose powder, I would use this very, very fluffy brush right here. So soft. Let's do that. Shake off the excess and just lightly dust over your face you can see that as you dust you are already less glowy but not to worry with all the highlighters that I have I can achieve that natural glow I just don't like to um, you know sometimes when you have your hair down and the wind blows if your face is sticky because you didn't set your um, foundation the small hair tends to stick onto your face and i absolutely hate that so i will go over like with the lightest dusting of powder okay i think we're done i've used like so little powder and the next layer of my powder regime i like to use this one from givenchy it is like four different colors so one of it is like a pale blue, another pale green, then there's this really light purple and white. So you use it all together. This one will color correct and give you like this more light reflecting and it makes you look fairer, pinkier. Mm -hmm. The foundation is set. Yes, this is the flawless canvas and you can put on your eyeshadow, which I have none on right now. You can put on your blusher for that pop of color. I'm just going to brush on my blusher, a quick one, because I'm not going anywhere fancy today. So I'm just going to do a very uh, natural makeup. So this is my favorite one for the moment. It is from Dior Rouge Blush Precious Rose Satin It's a really natural colour like almost a beige I take a very small everything is small here This is from MS one of my favourite blusher brush I've got all the sizes So this is a very large powder brush I still prefer the Hourglass one It's a, not as soft and I feel that it is going to pick up more powder than I need. So this one is really, really soft to the touch. So that's why I prefer this. But I love, love, love like the design of this brush. It's beautiful. But the blusher one, the tiny blusher one is the bomb. So I like to put my blusher right under my eyes directly under my eyes which is why I need such a small brush sometimes I would like put blusher all the way here okay let's do it just brush across like this whole area so it looks like you know I'm embarrassed most of the time okay we're done now just for a little bit of lips I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury Air Brush in the color Pillow Talk. Pillow Talk has been one of my favorite natural nude color for a long, long time. It's one of the best shade. Sometimes I feel like if I go for 
too nude a lipstick. I kind of look dead, but it's okay for like a normal day. So this is the lip blur. You blur it out by using your fingertips. And we're done. Maybe not yet. I promise I'll show you guys my highlighter. This one is in the shade Accelerate. One of my favorite ones, I must say. I'll just take a little bit. Okay, this is a really tiny brush. It's actually for like the corner of your eyes, but I use it for my highlighter because I just want to put like a tiny bit on under the highest point of my lips. Okay, what do you call that? Cupid's bow, yes. I just want to enhance my Cupid bow with a little bit of highlighter. It makes all the difference because um, when you highlight your Cupid's bow, you kind of look like you have a poutier lips. I could show you right now. Can you see my pout? Right there. Now you can see it, right? To bring back my natural glow, which I concealed with like my light dusting of loose powder, not to worry, I'm gonna take this brush. I feel that this is actually the perfect brush for your highlighter because I've tried many others that are either going to look too heavy or it's not heavy enough. This is the perfect one to me. Take a little bit of this. Be very, very sparing with the Rare Beauty um, highlighter because it's very strong. So, mm-hmm. There you go. So I will just draw a C from the side of my eye all the way down to the middle, this part, to give that natural glow. Sometimes I put a little bit here and a little bit here and if I want to highlight the center of my nose I will not choose to use the Rare Beauty highlighter because it gets too strong so I'm going to show you another one which is the Tom Ford this one is very subtle it is the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate Highlighting Duo in the color Mood Light this is how it looks like I'm going to take another kind of brush that's why I have 1000 brushes because every brush has a different purpose this one you can go a little bit more generous because it's like really subtle so down the center of my nose to just highlight this part mm -hmm. and then the tip of your nose to give a sharper tip because that will be the part that hits the light first and if you put like this highlighter it has more light so it is very pretty to have that so now yes we are finally done the contour the side of my face although I've had like my foundation contour but because I did not powder the side I am just going to go through it with a light dusting of contour powder this one is by Holika Holika is one of my favorites using a contour brush I will take like the first two colors so that it's not so strong and just go over the area which I had the darker foundation this will give me a smaller face and I like to take it all the way to the bottom of my neck to the bottom of my jawline where my neck is yep mm -hmm. now I'm ready so guys I'm all ready to go out foundation perfect flawless glowy and I hope you enjoyed this one and pick up some tips from me. I really love sharing this with you guys. And I'll see you in my next video. Ciao. Oh, wait. I love to set my face after 
my entire makeup regime and this is the pure gold mist which i swear by gosh it gives my face such glowy finish and it will further make my foundation more natural so yeah guys see you in the next one